Hit Film Sensei here. In today's video, we are going to talk about how to do this effect. Now this effect is commonly known as volumetric lighting and you will see it in all kinds of different videos. Uh, here's an example from Assassin's Creed. Here's an example from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And here's an example from Star Wars. These effects are also known as crepuscular rays, angel rays or god rays, unity rays. Also, they're called sun shafts or light shafts. But the bottom line is, is that you have rays that shoot out from a light source. Now, there's already a few tutorials out there. And so I'm going to leave some of those in the links in the description below. The tutorials include one from uh, Inkscape Digital. Also, there's a couple of tutorials by Simon Jones and also a video co-pilot tutorial. So how do you do this? Well, actually, this is a fairly simple effect. Now, the pro version of HitFilm has a volumetric lighting effect. And all you have to do is just drop it right on there. And it's very, very easy. However, in the Express version, there is not that effect, but you can still recreate that effect fairly simply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my raw footage, I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to come down to make a composite shot out of it. And I'm just going to leave everything here and click OK. All right, so the first thing I need to do is I need to duplicate my raw footage. So I'm going to right click on it and Duplicate. I could also use the Control D. Now I'm going to use my F2 key and I'm going to rename it Volumetric Lighting just so that I know which one is which. Okay. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of effects. So I'm going to go to the search bar of the effects and I'm going to type in the hue, saturation, and lightness effect under the color correction folder and I'm going to drop it into there. Okay. Under the Controls tab, I'll be able to find that. I could also do that down here. Under the, I'm going to twirl it open under the master section or master suck part. I'm going to just desaturate it, which basically means if you look at the video over here, I'm going to go from full color to no color, black and white. All right. The next effect I'm going to add is going to be the curves effect. Okay. Uh, although there's a couple of different ways of doing this, but I'm going to drag the curves effect underneath the hue, saturation, and lightness effect. I'm going to twirl it open, and I'm actually going to grab this and pull it over a little bit so that I can see my whole curves box. And I'm going to take the dark side of the curves here, and I'm just going to start to drag it over. And basically, I'm going to crush out all of the dark parts. All I want left is just the light that's in the shot. Now you can see that there's a little reflection here on the wall, a little reflection there. I don't want those either. So to help this out also, I'm going to use a masking tool and I am just going to mask out where the door is and only where the door is. So that way it is uh, no longer and you can see that I've masked it out. All I have is just that piece. I probably could get away with just masking in this particular shot, but I've found that the curves helps a lot. All right, now here's where the magic happens. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to look for the zoom blur effect. It's under the blurs folder, zoom blur, and I'm going to drag it into my timeline or uh, into the, uh, uh, the volumetric lighting, and then I'm going to twirl it open and crank up the st strength all the way, okay? Now the center hotspot, I could adjust the position, right? Just by grabbing it and moving it around, see like this, okay? And if I do that, then you can see that it will adjust those light rays. However, to make this easier, I'm going to create a new point layer. So I'm gonna click here, Alt, Control Alt P would do the same thing. And I'm going to rename this Control Point. And under the Zoom Blur, I'm going to say Use That Control Point Layer. So now if I grab that point and move it around, I can control where the hotspot position is. Okay. Now in this particular case, what I would like to do is I would like to have that those rays come out a little bit more. So I'm actually going to right-click on that Zoom Blur and 
duplicate it. That's why I wanted the control point, because it controls both of them like this, you see. All right, now all I have to do is right-click on the whole effect and change the blend mode to screen, and then I can turn on my underneath footage, and there's there is my volumetric lighting, you see. Now, normally, I would have this here, and then what would happen is, you know, uh, I could adjust the lighting. I could actually control the movement of it and things like that, okay? Also, I can, uh, uh, you know, I could have it shine off to one side over here. I could have it shine off to another side over here. Usually, though, you'll kind of put that right in the middle of the light source, uh, and the key to this effect is in the idea that the interaction, be, you know, between the, the actual footage and the light itself is what makes it happen. That's where the magic is, right? So actually, it's a pretty easy effect, right? You can do all kinds of things, have them stream through uh, blinds or something like that, uh, but easy enough. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from HitFilm Sensei, consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page, following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday, and thanks for your support.